Uh, so we are now in the point on the agenda where we are going to talk about student teaching. We talked about the early clinical, we talked about the last clinical, uh, and the methods courses. So now on to student teaching, and really you guys are the experts in student teaching because you're the ones who are there with candidates. So this is uh, this is pretty simple. I I designed about half an hour, give or take. Uh, 10 minutes to discuss the roles and responsibilities of what you, in your experience, consider the roles and responsibilities of student teachers to be, what you consider the roles of cooperating teachers to be, um, and what you consider the role of the university supervisor to be. Uh, not just, I mean, I guess you could approach this one of two ways, uh, or maybe both, uh, particularly with the university supervisor, um, what you think they are supposed to do and what you would like them to do, all right? It's okay to, you know, uh, so I would say 10 minutes apiece and be prepared to report out at the end of the total 30 minutes on your post notes. You can just have three columns. Uh, and then go ahead, obviously, and take a break in there somewhere. Some of you broke before, um, which is fine. If you need to break again, do that too. Um, so, questions? I know this is the most straightforward one because you guys are the experts, so.
you know where student work is, you know, what is your method, but just making sure that it's something that can be turned over to someone else, not just that it exists in theory. And then also having short-term and long-term plans that can change. It's fine to know what you're going to do tomorrow, but how does that lead to all of the days after that? But also understanding that, you know, that's a conversation between the two of us, and if I suggest something, then the rest of it doesn't have to go out the window. We can just make some tweaks, and then that's okay. Um, for the university supervisor, we had um, that that person make sure that both the pre-k <laughs> service teacher and the cooperating teacher are fulfilling their roles. Um, if there's a conflict, they're help, there to help resolve. They offer advice. Um, they make the pre-service teacher aware of job opportunities. Um, they provide helpful growth-based feedback, um, not just being nice, but giving constructive criticism. The cooperating teacher, um, that person will communicate meetings, event, events, schedule changes, things that will go. I know when, when I do taught, um, I didn't have my own district email, so my property teacher had to be the one to tell me if there was an event that I needed to know about. Um, make sure that you're doing things together, like talking about the students, talking about grades, assessments, lessons. Um, guide through parent contact. Sometimes you can get into like a sticky situation, so the property teacher will help you navigate that situation. Um, give guidance on resources and materials that have been helpful in the past. Help with the reflection process through modeling and through um, questioning the student teacher, um, I mean the pre-service teacher. Um, model um, record keeping, organizational techniques at work, and um, give them support during the struggle.
responsibility um, of the cooperating teacher and student teacher because they they are responsible for both of these people. What does it mean? What are we talking about there? Dual responsibility. Communicate. Right? Yeah. yeah. To communicate to both students and cooperatives. And again, goal setting. Goal setting when across the board. Um, student teacher prepared. Any of these we've heard before. Prepared, punctual, professional. Share assignments in a timely manner. Um, for instance, if you get an assignment in your class, show us right away so that we see what your goal is and can help to get that done. Um, know the climate and the culture of the school, and a lot of this has to do with uh, good communication here. Um, know the school by systems and policies, you know, like PBIS or PBI. Does it a little different? And take initiative. Ask, can I do something for you? Can I, can I help with this? Uh, we also said at all times to be reflective. Um, all of them. Every day, reflect on what happened that day, take the time to discuss it. Is there anything I missed? Uh, next we have the math magicians, yes? And we are uh, pulling theirs up. So most of what you're going to see in these lists are really similar to, uh, to everything that uh, has already been talked about. Um, trying to figure out if there's something here that we need to, to address. Um, how, about, uh, how about the university supervisors uh, observing the, uh, the teaching? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Um, how about the, how about using the real world observation form that you guys talked about um, with your uh, with your discussion the last time that you presented? I thought that was I thought that was good uh, and, and, and something we had there. Um,
request observation by other professionals. I know a couple other groups have come in and mentioned that as well. We think that's important as well. And also we think it's important that the student teacher get to know all um, of the staff, including custodians, including the office staff, parapros, things like that. Um, it's a really important part of being in the school culture. For the cooperating teacher, it's always important to familiarize with the school and the curriculum, um, provide basic classroom resources. You don't want to overburden the student teacher with every single thing that you have, but you do need to make sure that they have those key things that they're going to need to set them up for success. Um, offer support and guidance. Uh, provide timely feedback, just like you're expecting from your student teacher. You want to give them that same type of feedback. Um, you want to make sure that you allow the student to take control over your student teacher. You want them to have control. If you're not willing to give that up, um, so you may want to consider. Um,